This is the Entertainment Roundup for Monday, the 5th of August, 2013. I'm Jason and just let's get right straight to the topic at hand. One of the main topics I'm going to uh, be talking about, um, it has been the topic for the last four days in the sporting world, in the entertainment world. Um, WFM was covering it, CNN was covering it, all the papers was covering it. Uh, we know it's going to come down because they were talking about it coming down on Monday. Alex Rodriguez um, suspended from baseball for the rest of 2013 and into 2014. So that is a year and a half. Two years of him not being in baseball if you count those um, other days. Uh, and uh, all I got to say is that, wow, what a sad fall from grace um, he has had um, over the last uh, few years. Um, as you know, he was um, being accused of, uh, of a performance enhancement drug um, PED. Uh, which also includes um, tampering with evidence, intimidating witnesses, um, just so much stuff being thrown out there. Um, and over the last year, especially with him uh, when being out uh, with his injuries and especially with the situation, his relationship with the Yankees as well as the fans, it, it's very clear that, that uh, the fans of New York, uh, whether justifiable or not, is just fed up with him. They fed up with his attitude. They fed up with uh, the the the, um, the scandals. Um, the papers are pretty much um, is echoing the uh, Yankees fans' um, rage. Um, not one single um, coverage of this story is on Alex Rodriguez's side. It's just pretty much um, pretty much the papers are saying just get out, just go, take your punishment like a, like a man and just disappear. Um, and that has been the whole jest of this whole entire um, scenario in New York. Not one paper is sided with them. Um, now for sort of celebrities, Jay-Z um, has reportedly, just saying reportedly, came by his side, um, but Jay-Z doesn't play baseball. He doesn't answer to Major League Baseball. Alex Rodriguez does. Um, there was a report that they was trying to him to get a plea deal with him, um, but then, then the report said that they had said no deal. You have to take this. Um, he's not the only one that's, um, that got handed down sentences. Um, there's a lot of the players, two Yankees, other than him, has also been put into this situation where they got banned 50 games. So, yeah, the Yankees situation this season is not being helped at all. Um, they just further lost two more players that may have actually helped salvage their season. Now, I don't know if that season's going to ever be salvaged at all, but I'll get to that in a second. I just want to stay focused on the Alex Rodriguez situation. There were other players that was named, a lot of players that was named. Some players have already have served their sentence. Uh, which was a 50-game susp suspension from baseball. Uh, it was pretty much uh, the lightest sentence you can kind of get for baseball. And again, be Alex Rodriguez got the harshest one that could have been a lifetime ban. And that is something that I want people to understand. This could have been a lifetime ban, but instead they chose to give him the 211-game suspension. Um, the, obviously, the reason why they're more harsh on him because of his involvement is not just um, the performance enhancement drug which he's been accused of using, but there is also other there's also other elements that is involved here, tampering with evidence and as well as intimidating witnesses, which is something that the Major League pa Baseball is very, very serious about. They're very, very serious. They're very, very concerned about. And that is something that is that is something that has uh, uh, really brought to, to their contention to the point where even the feds might get involved in. They might. We're not too sure. They have mentioned it, but who knows what the Fed um, is going to do? Who knows what Congress is going to do? But make no mistake about it. This whole situation with Ronald Rodriguez have really became into one big circus, one sad circus. And you, one can only ask the question: Is uh, is this really the end of the line for Ronald Rodriguez? Is this this is complete fall from grace from Alex Rodriguez um, because, let's be honest, if you compare from the last 10 years to his first 10 years uh, in baseball, um, he was a darling of baseball. Um, they loved him in Seattle, they loved him in Texas, and even at one point they actually loved him in New York, um, but some things have started to happen. Some things are sort of rubbing the baseball, um, the Yankees the wrong way. You know how New York are on. New York loves to win. Um, and there were some things, there were some signs that didn't show that. Now, granted, I was happy for him and the Yankees when he finally won a championship with him. But it seemed like it was only short-lived. And that was when rumors started coming up about him using STOM, using performance enhancement drugs, which he later admitted. Um, and that pretty much drew a very not-so-favorable 
um, view of him. You saw him getting injured. Um, he wasn't the same player as he was. But I think the one thing that rubbed a lot of people also the wrong way is how um, the Yankees have given him a contract which they themselves regret giving him. Um, they have actually have shown that when they actually kept him from playing. I don't know um, if the Yankees or if that's going to be enough for them to opt on that contract. Who knows what's going to happen with that. But it's one thing that's very clear. And I think WFN did a good job. Mike Francesa done a good job of uh, criticizing the Yankees on this move, and rightfully so, if I may say, in terms of how they handled the situation with A-Rod. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, but one thing is definitely uh, we cannot deny. All this revolves around a Ross attitude, um, his involvement with steroids, um, and um, it was pretty much echoed by his um, lack of performance in the playoffs, as well in the last few years, because he's not the a Rod that we come to know when he was in his prime. His prime is gone, and it really was evidence um, with um, the last few years, especially when he had to go and get surgery, which left him out for half a season. Uh, but this whole new allegation, which blew up last year, and this seemed to really resonate more and more as this season came down, uh, makes you wonder just what the hell that they have on him. Um, baseball claims to have a lot of stuff on him. They are confident that even if he goes to appeal, which from what I read, that is exactly what he has um, have done. Um, it makes me wonder what, what they really, really do have um, on him that gave him such a hard some sentence. And if these allegations are true, and Hamrock and, um, and a -Rock can't prove it, will that appeal um, hurt him in terms of well, baseball can put more um, more punishment towards the already 211 game suspension he has to serve, or will it, or will it not? So I'm really wondering if Avon is in a no situation, or if he's just pulling a pill just to play out the remaining the season. It still remains to be seen. But one thing I do really question, because the whole thing was coming up, I was always wondering what exactly does baseball have? Because let's be honest, they we heard it, all this information, we heard it was collecting evidence, we heard Avon's name. But they never really revealed what these evidence were. Um, there was really never was a trial on this situation. So it does raise the question of uh, how, just how much evidence is there uh, that they're so confident we will win it even the arbitrary um, appeal. Now, on the other side, it does um, raise the question of just how much truth um, does, does do they have on everyone? Because let's be honest, when you hear almost all the players who was naming the situation take the 50 game suspension and not even attempt to appeal it, it does raise your eyebrows as to what involvement that Alex Rodriguez has and how much did he actually coach these other players into um, going into this lab um, and doing all sorts of stuff um, in terms of you know beating the system um, to the point where when he got when they got caught, it's really nothing else to fight. So it really does raise the question of how 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 much really did he have involvement with, as well as just how much evidence does Major League Baseball have to turn to justify the 211 game suspension. We may find out soon if the appeal comes in. Uh, we may even find out through Beezer through Legal if Major League Baseball choose to reveal some of the information. One thing I will say, Major League Baseball is pretty much patting themselves on the back for this. Um, they're, they're just basically gloating, they're basically pounding their fists. Um, it's very obvious they're happy about the results, and there's a reason. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the fact that they're like, you know, look away, we did something. But after getting criticized in the last decade um, about being so lax on performance enhancement drugs, um, and pretty much being called out by um, not only some of the players, but also some of the, um, the fans who basically said, how can you... How can all this happen? And that toppled the fact there has been some deaths in baseball related to um, performance enhancement drugs. Um, you better believe that baseball is going to do everything they can and say, see, we're, we're doing something. We're serious. Look at what we've done. Look at how many people we caught and disbanded. So you better believe they're going to play into that. They better believe they're going to pat themselves on the shoulder and basically gloat about this. I may not agree with this. Um, you may not. You may think that this is a is a, a terrible move in poor taste, um, beating the guys right down. But believe me when I say this: after years and years and years of people criticizing them, both from the media and baseball fans have brought about them, you know, basically turning a blind eye um, to juice baseball, to players being juiced. 
they're going to say, they're going to use it as saying that, no, we're all tough on drugs. This is what we have done. Pretty much their own wellness policy. And they're trying to enforce a rule um, that, let's be real here, both the union and the league agreed on. And the fact that you have players still trying to cheat that system, who was a part of that um, agreement um, process, really says a lot about some of the players' disregard for the policy they, even, they themselves even put into play. So, I don't know what's going to happen after this. I don't really don't know. I, I, I think that this is going to be something that's going to be ongoing all year, at least until next year. Um, but one thing is definitely um, is um, certain. Um, A-Rod um, has the right to appeal, and um, I hope he comes with his A-game and explains that, no, this is not true. I can prove it, because if he's just appealing to play baseball this season, um, all he's doing is pulling in the elbow. He's got a 211-game suspension. That's all of 2014. That's pretty much if he um, choose to not, uh, if he choose not to, to take the um, take the appeal. That's the remaining of this season. But if he does um, go through it and he still is found guilty by the arbitrator, guess what? He still may be out to 2015. So, to me, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say except, hey, right, if you're going to appeal, you better have something that backs up your claim that you had nothing to do with what they are saying to do. And you better hope that evidence isn't too overwhelming. And that's the best way I can say it. That's the best, that's the only thing I can say about the, the situation. Man, this is, man, what a fall from grace, man. Really, what a fall from grace. This, I, I say again, I can't stress it enough. There are a lot of people admired Alex Rodriguez's performance. He was a great young prospect. Um, I remember when the Yankees, even the Mets, was first trying to get him. Um, and I'll say honestly, um, the situation with the Mets, um, that was pretty much the agent's fault. But I do remember, um, I do remember solidly that they're trying to get, uh, was trying to get him, and the fact um, that uh, he didn't, he didn't go with the Mets. He went with the, with the Texas uh, Rangers at the time. Uh, pretty much did a south part of the Mets fans. But when the Yankees got him, uh, many people was happy about him. They were, it was happy. They got a great player. And uh, over the years, um, the 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 fan love fair for him just started to dwindling to the point where it's now just nothing but hate. There, I, there's very few Yankee fans that want him back. Even the fact that even the Yankees, who are struggling right now, just just stay above 500. Forget about the playoffs. Just trying to stay above 500 with the lack of talent they got right now, with all the injuries, with all the situation with the pitching. Um, the fact that they're even 500 at this, as we speak is just a miracle on itself. But right now, um, they're struggling, and yet despite the struggling, despite the uh, uh, the um, subpar 500 um, average they are playing right now with, no one wants to see, no one, no Yankee fan wants to see him back on the field. Um, they don't want his bat, which is kind of strange. They're willing to take a guy who is barely batting 100 um, to the guy who can possibly give you 260, 270. So that says a lot about the credit that the fan base he has here right now in New York. It's, again, is it something that's justified? No. I think there's some of it has more to do with the fact is that they're just angry that he didn't perform the way they expected him to perform when he, um, when he was in his prime. But there's other stuff that I can't really blame the fans for getting upset for, like the fact that he is caught in this situation again and possibly was involved not just with still doing drugs, but just basically coercing others to do the same thing um, intimidating um, um, witnesses to make sure they don't talk or just basically manipulate them so in case they do situations come up they'll say something else so this is just one big disaster after another and uh, I, I'm hoping that when all is said and done we finally find out what really the, M the um, MLB has I don't know how much, they can, how much that's gonna, um, gonna affect it uh, but I do know one thing though um, the fanfare he had with this team is pretty much gone. I mean, it is gone. Um, it, it's, it's pretty much, I have not seen so much hate in New York for a player who's supposed to be playing for our team in, in such a long, long time. I don't even think that uh, Pete Rose had this much hate um, when he got caught with the scandal he is. Um, but I wasn't around that time, so I can't, I really don't know. But this has been, man, this has been one hate fest. Uh, from the media to the fans, and uh, I'm just hoping that this ends soon um, before this before even blow up even more. Um, God knows, um, this may be just the beginning. I will leave a link to the article. I haven't really touched on the article, um, but there's really nothing to touch on. If you've been if you've been watching sports, I've um, been watching CNN, 
ESPN. Um, if you're a fan of WFAN, um, you you pretty much know what's going on. You, that's all you pretty much need to to, to know. Uh, you just pretty much know everything from from that from those coverage. But I'll leave a link below. You guys can talk about it. Um, and uh, I'm gonna move on to the other topics here. Uh, well, I might as well talk about the Jeopardy situation that um, that ABC News has been talking about. Um, something happened. I didn't watch Jeopardy for a while. I don't know who, what the gist is. I know Al Sebex, there's rumors that he may be retiring this year. But there's something here that a lot of people have brought to attention. It says, John Jeopardy contestant feels cheated. Um, this has been brought by ABC uh, News. I will leave a link below. But it says here that uh, Thomas Hurley III appearance on TV quiz show Jeopardy um, and set tongue and fingers waging and how he um, spelled out his disagreement over the results. For the final answer in Jeopardy, Kid uh, Week game that aired July 31st, the 12-year-old Newtown, Connecticut uh, boy misspelled, well, obviously that's the reason why it is. Uh, I, am, I can't even pronounce this word. Uh, and Panic is E M A N C I P P A T Amepantation Proclamation. Amecomation Proclamation, thank you. Um, he wrote um, a different word even though the answer and my god guys, my glass is not on so keep in mind of that, but the way they wrote it it's like it, it, it would even sound like the word where they spelled. But in any case, <laughs> that's what happens when sometimes writers write these things. Um, he wrote something else. Even though the answer was correct, the judge and the show host, Alex Tabak, said that he couldn't accept it because it was badly misspelled according to Tabak. Hmm. Interesting. Now Harley is airing his displeasure with the ruling. The game show controversy and scandal. <laughs> controversy and scandal. And before I go any further, I want to just make this very clear. Besides my um, mispronunciation of the word myself. Um, Jeopardy is known to be one of those bright-eyed game shows. They're not one of those popcorn game shows. Um, this is a game show that really takes um, this um, way, the way they pronounce, um, pronounce the word and how they deal with um, words like what is, who is. Um, they take that very seriously. So even if you said something right, you can actually get wrong. So here's something like this. And by the way, this is probably one of the rare occasions that that actually happened. Um, this is not a shock to me uh, because of the seriousness of what this game show is. Keep in mind, not too long ago, Alex Sebeck actually banned a school. It was a, it was a college um, edition, a lot of students was there, um, and he actually banned this school from ever coming back to Jeopardy. Now, whether that ban has been lifted or not, I don't know, but there was a reason for that. And because there was a lot of rowdy um, kids that were screaming and yelling, um, and the following um, show, following taping, he announced, and I remember this as if it was yesterday, that he apologized to the audience watching on TV. Those schools was rude and rowdy, and they would never come back again. And that's all because they was, you know, getting a little excited, and rightfully so. They, 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 was, they should be um, disciplined for that. Um, criticized for that and and I have a talk to because they were being a little bit rude because they did it too much but as a result of that that school was never allowed to go back again now this was years ago I'm hoping that um, all things is um, is patched up bygones be bygones but this is how serious the show is uh, this show is not one of those you know shows you get all excited they take um, the contestants seriously I believe the screening is done seriously and um, I think they even the spelling is done seriously in some areas. Now, in terms of this, there were two articles I looked at. Um, the fans of the show was, was getting on Alex Abrex for not allowing um, the kid to, to get the points because of this misspelling. Um, and we are going to read here about it. Uh, this is uh, uh, even the contestant said that, hey man, you, you did cheat the kid out. Um, I was pretty upset that I was cheated out of the finals. It was a Jeopardy question. It was just a spelling error, Holly, um, of Newtown Middle School students said. In an interview um, that appeared Sunday on the website of New Times 
um, Derby. Having done the answer correct wouldn't have made a difference to the outcome. Um, who wants uh, Stella Hornback, who also had a correct answer with the correct spelling, um, has a 36,600 um, 36, going into the final round. Thomas had 9,000, 6,000, in which he weighs 3,000 in the outcome of the final round. So really, either way you see it, uh, he was still a loss. But that's not the point. I think the point is that he actually got it right. Um, but um, also I said that, hey, man, your spelling is not right. You, gotta get it. you, you need to have it. That's the correct spelling. And, and that's it. Now, I don't know the rules in terms of the final round that you have to spell everything correct. I don't know about, I about the rules. I, I, I don't know if that's actually a set rule or that was just adjustment call from Alex to back. What if I give the kid that? If he actually said it verbally, I'll probably say yeah. If he couldn't say it verbally, like I obviously couldn't do when I was reading it, then that's when I had to say no. Uh, that's the thing I think it all depends can he have said it verbally and I think that was the thing I think people that people were a little bit upset about because he obviously knew what it was but a few miscorrections fell in here and there and he said no we can't deal with that there's a lesson to be learned here in terms of the real world even bosses who go to interviews look at your spelling and say if you can't spell some word or spell words that we know which gonna have to be used on a daily day-to-day -day operation chances are you may not be able to be qualified for that job um, Hatchback 12 of Soaring, Kentucky, weighs $30,000, ended up with $60,000. That was the highest one day total for the Jeopardy Kid Week game and the third highest uh, one day total in every, according to the show. Um, the decision is to disqualify Thomas answered on least criticism on the program's Facebook page from viewers who thought the decision of the spelling was harsh. Others find Tibet explanation rude and inappropriate. Hmm. Will of Fortune, one million, okay. And one post wrote, he's 12, give the kid a break. In a statement overnight, Jeopardy producers defended the decision, telling ABC News if Jeopardy was to give credit for incorrect response, uh, however minor, the show would affect um, penalization of the other players. Harley's Mother's son, Susan, said our son was a little stunned by the loss. He felt embarrassed. She should, uh, she told the news time it was hard to watch. The show was taped on February. Um, Thomas won $2,000 as the second runner-up. He told the news time that he had saved his money for college and that he felt he feels good to know that others share his belief in the answer. I'm a little mixed, guys. <laughs> I'm, again, I, I, I'm like this. Would I have made a big deal of it? Not really. If I was out of Tavek, I probably would have said, what did you mean by the spelling thing? Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I'd probably say if he can pronounce it verbally, then fine. If he couldn't pronounce it verbally, then no. That's how I would have done it. Um, you got to keep in mind that not every kid that goes into Jeopardy is rocket science. I know this is not the first... Um, Jeopardy um, um, game kid um, week they had. There were others, um, but I, I think that uh, I think they expect too many whiz, kid, whiz kids to get these big words. Keep in mind, I'm I'm 35. I I, I had trouble getting this word um, out, so I, I understand just how much he probably would have done it. Um, but I think the screening for these kids, I think they have a very tough screening on these kids, and um, they pick the brightest of the brightest. So I think that was pretty much what <laughs> what has happened. Um, the Hardy family declined comments further when uh, reached by ABC News saying they have moved on to this point. All right, so no big harsh deal. Um, they no lawsuit's going to happen. Um, but in, it, it does raise the question a little bit about uh, should Alex Harris cut the kid a break? Um, and uh, should they really expect these kids to be, uh, to be perfect in every single thing, especially with the spelling? Um, I wrote like this. Um, it, to me, it's a harsh lesson in 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 in, in, in life, in my opinion. Um, I, I know a lot of jobs take spelling very seriously, um, and I think that uh, game shows like this, as well as Jeopardy, which, by the way, again, I have to say it, to repeatedly, it's not a popcorn 
uh, game show. Um, they are very tough answer questions, and there's a structure that they go by to spec the answer. They've been around for a long time, and they haven't changed that one. I think the one they did try to attempt to be more looser uh, was uh, Rock and Roll Jeopardy. Um, how long did that last? You get my picture here. So, no, um, I, I think I don't think that uh, Sebek was uh, should be too harshly criticized. I understand what everybody's saying here. Uh, but they do have rules, and I think that there is a rule about the, about spelling when it comes to the finals. Um, would I agree with it sometimes or not? That's really not my call. Um, but I think it's a, it's a good lesson in life. Make sure your spelling is, is accurate. Um, but again, if, if it was only just a minor situation, um, and this is, this is like Kids Week, I would just simply ask the kid, what, uh, to please pronounce what you have wrote. And that's it. That's all. Obviously, Trebek know what he really wrote, so I wouldn't give it a break. But again, it didn't seem to to hurt him chances of winning. I just think he was just embarrassed that he didn't take, they didn't get the um the points, um because if what this article is saying is true, and obviously it is, um he wouldn't have won anyway. So it wasn't really about him winning. It was about the fact that he got embarrassed that uh, because of a spelling error, uh, Alex didn't award him. And let's be honest, um. It, it is something more towards the school level. Um, school is going to look at this saying, wow, uh, the Charlie Brown syndrome or something. So you got to remember that, uh, that it's not just his family watching, it's his um, classmates is watching as well. In any case, I'd like to hear your opinion on this. This is a very interesting story. Um, I'll leave a link to it. You guys can um, you bring your own opinion on that. And I'm moving on to the very last story. Yeah, I'm cutting it short this time, guys. Uh, a mass involving the Man of Steel. Already, the sequel has already been announced, and already we have names being thrown out there um, for the uh, Batman contender. And uh, I will say this about this: the names that they're throwing out here, uh, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm, I wouldn't be stunned if they picked them, but I'm kind of wondering if they're going too much with star power on this one. Um, here are the names that are being thrown out here. Josh Brolin, um, which they said is being a front runner of the Batman thing. I don't know if he wants to take it. Got Ryan Gosling. Um, you have um, Joe McGallagher from True Blood. These are some of the um, names that's being thrown out there. Um, and uh, pretty much, uh, this is something that uh, people has been keeping an eye on. Who's going to play Batman? A lot of people say just get Christian Bale back. I don't think he's coming back, guys. I think people need to understand that. I think people need to accept the fact that that his Batman is over. Uh, he had the longest tenure of all the Batmans in the movie is concerned um, combined. He did three. Um, Michael Keaton second. We did two and still considered the best of all the Batmans. And you also have, um, you know, again, his name is always Val Kilmer. The reason why I keep forgetting his name because his career just disappeared on me. And um, George Cooney with one. Um, and even Adam West, he did a Batman movie, but one. So I don't think he's coming back. I think that they're all looking for a new face, which they should be looking for a new face. But I, if I'm Warner Brothers, go with someone new. Go with someone that people don't expect you to go with. I, and that's my opinion, because the reason why is I know what Ron Johns Bowen is. I think he's a great actor. I love his son performance. Um, Ryan Gosling, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if he can play. I see him playing a villain, but as Batman, I don't know. I I don't see him playing the cape and cow. I just don't. Um, True Blood. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I uh, I gotta think that one through. Um, I gotta think that one really through. I I don't think that the. Uh, I'm not saying no. But I'm not uh, going to say uh, that I'm actually looking forward to it. I will say this. Uh, if Josh Brolin gets picked, he'd probably be the oldest actor out of all the um, people who played him to be um, Bruce Wayne. Um, he's 46 now. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Uh, is he is the guy um, who's going to be uh, playing it long term? Especially with the Avengers. Um with the blueprint for the Avengers coming. I don't know if that's the, it's going to happen, it's going to be a savory idea. Um, Ryan Gosling, 
E32. If they go but go with the blueprint of the uh, of the Justice League, sorry, Avengers, I still got that in my mind. If they go with the just if they go with the Justice League, uh, yeah, he probably has a long tendency, uh, but uh, I don't know. I I'm not feeling these main stars. I still want a fresher, newer face to play him, and and that's pretty much because. If it reboot it, just reboot it with a fresh new face, fresh stars, and even if it's, if it's going to be pretty much more of a Superman sequel, this would be the perfect time to show that new face in, um, of Hollywood. Um, but you guys may disagree. Um, one thing is definitely certain. They're all bringing the names out. They're all bringing the names out in, in droves, and they're and they saying, who will face against Henry Cavill? And this is what concerns me, because when I read this article, and maybe this is something that, uh, that they will change over time. Who will face off against Henry Creel in the Man of um, Steel sequel? Um, Superman battles Batman, which is, was a question mark. I'm going to say it right there. It, it may not be a battle. It may be a team-up. I'm hoping that it's a team-up because I do not want to see Superman Batman battling out already. Um, but it does bring the question of how this movie is going to be. Uh, will this be a Batman, Superman, you know, going you know, fa you know, face to face against the common evil? Or will they do like a Frank Miller Superman? I don't want to see a Frank Miller Superman. At all, I really don't. Um, that there's no room for that. Uh, if you're gonna make a Justice League, do it right. Half Batman, Superman. You want to talk about they don't trust each other, but in the end, um, they become allies and fight against the common evil. Fine, but don't make this into a Batman movie in a Superman film. I don't want to see that. I don't even think the fans want to see that. They probably want to see a team up, but they don't want to see them going against each other, especially when you're just rebooting the series. Um, but it does says there, it said according to Hollywood Reports, director Zack Snyder is beginning to format the list of potential actors and is um, considering casting um, Kate Crusaders in his late 30s or early 40s. The sequel is reportedly not to tell all the characters' origin stories, but to give the fans an establishment reg. Um, Batman similar to the character in Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns the comic series in the 80s. So, so that's basically what he's doing. And again, I'm concerned about that. I am deeply concerned about that. Uh, if any of these characters are potential, fine. I have no problem with that. Um, but I will have a problem with this being the Batman show. And again, I do not want that to happen. I do not want that to happen. So I'll leave a link to that as well, and you guys can check it out yourself. I'll leave a link to all the stories that I've talked about. Give me your opinion on each one of these. I'd like to hear, hear your opinions. Um, but as always, um, if you agree or disagree, leave the comments below. Until then, this is J77 saying take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon.